I do understand the amount of time that uh, we will have off eventually. I mean, I think it's the longest that uh, we've had off as a team. I think it's nine days. So uh, leading up to game one, we know we play on Wednesday. Um, you know, just steadily watching this other series is, you know, it's going the distance. I think that, uh, you know, just incredible competitive fire in both teams and um, some big time plays that were made last night in that game. Um, and they weren't ready to go home. So now it's forced to game seven and we just wait from there and then, um, you know, we go from there. But our preparation is still continuous every single day, although we don't know the team. Um, just still locked in, just being constant professional. Curry coach said he threw some new things out of you guys today just to keep things fresh and engaged. Does that help a bit? Yeah, it does. Um, especially at a time like this, uh, we're itching to play. We're, you know, we're, we're just literally every time we go through somewhat of a walkthrough, we, we're ready to compete. And, um, you know, it's, it's fun at the same time. But still, we still want to get out there and play. But, uh, we just got to try some new things in order for these next few days, in order for us to stay as sharp as we can going into game one. You guys had uh, really good games, especially offensively, the first two against the Wizards. And then the third one, you scored 115, but lost. Um, and, and Bradley and, and John went off. Um, what, have you looked at that game, and, and what went wrong for you guys there? How does it affect your preparation in the event of the Wizards? Uh, you want me to talk about the regular season game? Yeah, that the, we played the last, the last one. one? Yeah. Um, where do you want me to talk about it? Uh, I think one of the guards went off, had 37 and the other one had 20-something. And uh, I think it, it seemed like it was a tough night for you guys in transition. Is that something that you have to pay extra attention to when you play the Wizards? Oh, yeah. I mean, if, if, if it does come down to Wizards, Definitely some things that we have to be aware of. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that the three games that we played in the regular season, uh, I'll compare them to where they are now as a team. Um, you know, we definitely have some, some heightened awareness on John and, and Brad. Um, you know, they're just great players. So just prepare for them if we do get a chance to play them. I mean, play against them, excuse me. What did you think about the end of that game last night with uh, John Wall hitting the shot from, you could say, probably your favorite spot on the floor, that right wing there? Uh, it was nice, man. Um, you know, to, I think, uh, you know, for as a as a player to have the guts to be able to take that shot um, in that time frame, and it's almost a broken play. Uh, they were running for a double on the weak side for Brad coming up, and they denied it. Then John pops up. He's tiptoeing on the sideline, and he comes up and shoots a, a left as he pull up jumper on the right wing. I mean, it takes guts to take that shot and we made it. And now, of course, the game seven, that's all you can ask for is a 50-50 chance. And uh, he, he's given them a chance. With so much time in between these games, is there anything <coughs> in your game that you've worked on in the last few days specific to anything else? I mean, I don't, not necessarily. I mean, I try to work on just a complete array of things. So um, that's regardless of what's going on. It's always when I step in the gym, it's a complete array of things that I'm working on. Uh, being at some off week, trying to dive into other parts of what, what you guys do as a team, and you talk to Kevin about kind of the individual handshakes you guys have. And he said it's actually part of the Cavs culture. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to know who's the ringleader there, how do you come up with them, and how do you remember them all? I mean, well, depending on the type of team that you played on, coming up through middle school, high school, college, and uh, now in the NBA, I mean, I've had handshakes with my teammates throughout my basketball career. That's just a thing that I've, I've always done. Um, and still, to this day, most of my handshakes with my best friends that I've known since high school are still the same. Um, and some of my teammates that I played high school basketball or college with, we still have the same handshakes. So it's just a continuous on thing. But um, when it gets to this level, I think that uh, it's seen a lot more. Um, but we all come up with it. We all have creative ideas. And it's just a, a collective way just to greet your teammate every time you see him. How much practice does it take to get it down? I didn't take that much practice <laughs> at all, at all, man. Um, it's just one simple thing. I'll, you know, we'll, we'll come up with a, a hand sign or something that we relate to or a sound or something, and then we we'll just go out and do it and work on it twice and then on to it. Do you have new ones for the season? Like, if, you know, you switch them up? Uh, some guys do. Some <laughs> guys do. Um, or some guys shorten them up. <laughs> uh, I've shortened mine up a few times. So. <laughs> what, was, uh, what was new that tied through the events today? Uh, just uh, some defensive stuff, uh, testing us and 
uh, things that we could prepare for that would help us in any series that we, uh, any team that we're playing against. Um, you know, just a few plays, see if we're watching the games and uh, the plays that they're running. The, the, there are regular plays between Boston and Washington, just seeing how we react and then going from there. You said everybody's sorry, everybody's itchy and antsy. Are they conveying that through their actions or talk or just everybody is kind of chomping? I mean, when we say we're going about 50%, some guys are going 75 and 80, and some guys are going 25 and 20. So when you have a mix like that, and we're not necessarily shooting the ball, we're just running through plays, some guys get a, a little bit antsy and, and mad, and they want to go to the basket and finish plays and, and just just get the you know just get everything firing again because you, you miss the contact, you miss just getting, getting hit and being able to be there for your teammate and, and get hype and go in transition. It's just a little nuances of the game of just that makes it this game so beautiful and competitive and you love it so when you're not playing it for as of right now you just try to do anything to uh, keep it sharp ty said uh, sorry, <laughs> ty said that he didn't scrimmage you guys and he won't um you wish that he would just because a absolutely a absolutely i wish he would but at the same time i understand how important it is um, you know that incident happened um in practice uh, there was somebody who got hit in the hand, and it was it just wasn't good. I, and I wanted to, I was come, about to come out and play five on five, and the incident happened three seconds later as, as T. Lou comes out of the door. Uh, so, no, uh, I'm not I'm not for the scrimmaging right now to the game. So. Thanks, everybody. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, first I have to follow up on the incident. What, what, what are you referring to? Uh, just we'll like, well, yeah, yeah, we're about to put something out. Okay. I, you go. I got a separate question. Um, I asked you about this before. I'm not trying to get state, state secrets, but can you just describe the, the physical exertion that the Versa Climber requires? It's a beast, man. It's a beast. Uh, but uh, it, my first year when I had Coach Scott here, we did about uh, 1,500 to 2,000 feet continuous, and I died. Like I, After that, I, my rookie year, I just... I passed out as soon as I got off, off the Versa climber. Um, and then I tried to stay away from it uh, my next few years. And probably about last year and the year before, I've kind of fallen in love with uh, how quickly you can get in shape with the Versa climber because it's just exertion of your just full body of everything. And then the mental part of just, you know, putting your, your body through high physical exertion, I love it. Um, and as a team, I think guys love it as well because if you do even two minutes or three minutes, it, it's comparable to a lot of the uh, conditioning things that you would you would use to get in shape. Um, and it, literally, you could do that for about three days, and it'll make a world of difference. And I love it. So.